welcome to lecture number 14 of advanced geotechnical engineering course. In the previous lecture we have introduced ourselves to methods for measuring the permeability. Uh, we said that uh, there are two types of methods in the laboratory one is uh, constant head test and uh, falling head test and we also discussed about the chief difference the chief differences between these two test methods. In this lecture which is permeability and seepage part 3 uh, we will try to discuss about the factors affecting permeability and then we will introduce ourse ourselves to different types of the flows and uh, the e uh, mathematics which is connected with the uh, seepage phenomenon. So this part of the lecture is permeability and seepage part 3. So as shown in this slide the permeability and drainage characteristics of soils are shown the coefficient of permeability k which is actually mentioned in meter per second if you look into this the one which is actually then there in the yellow color wherein it actually has uh, in a good drainage characteristics when it comes to this uh, pink color this particular range has the poor drainage characteristics and the color which is in orange here that is beyond 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second which is actually has the practically impervious drainage characteristics. So this particular uh, uh, these uh, permeabilities are possible for uh, soils which are a clean gravel or clean sands or clean sand with gravel mixers. Uh, the poor drainage characteristics or the soils which are actually having permeability in the range of 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second. This is possible for very fine sands, organic and inorganic silts, mixers of sand, silt and uh, uh, clay, glacial till, stratified clay deposits. So for this type of soils it is possible that the permeability can be in the range of 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second. For certain type of soils like homogeneous clay below the zone of weathering uh, these soils can actually possess the permeability uh, in the range of 10 to the power of minus 8 to 10 to the power of minus 11 meter per second. So uh, we have different ranges of uh, permeabilities and there is a unique property for the soil and uh, the soils which can have the granular soils mostly have uh, good permeability are very high permeability uh, fine grain soils have low permeability. The factors affecting the permeability if you wanted to look into it the quotient of permeability is a measure of the ease with which water flows to the uh, permeable materials. So this is uh, you know put forwarded by Kozni uh, Karman and uh, this in he, he has proposed an equation they have proposed an equation which is V is equal to 1 by C s and s suffix s t square and uh, multiplied by gamma w by mu into E q by 1 plus E into i. So this is nothing but uh, V is equal to k i the component k that is coefficient of permeability is uh, indicated here by 1 by C s S s t square gamma w by mu into E q by 1 plus E. So this is according to uh, Kozni Karman uh, this is basically valid for uh, uh, coarse grain soils and Taylor 1948 he has also proposed uh, equation reflecting the influence of the permeant and soil characteristics on the K and this is uh, uh, using the this is deduced by using the Poiseuille's law which is uh, given like this V is equal to C into D E square the D E is nothing but the particle size gamma w by mu gamma w is nothing but the unit weight of the uh, permeant mu is nothing but the dynamic viscosity of the permeant E q by 1 plus E into I. So both this equation assume that interconnect voids are visualized as a number of capillary tubes through which the water can flow. So we have uh, two sets of uh, equations one is proposed by Kozni carbon basically is valid for coarse grain soils the other one is uh, Taylor 1948 which is deduced based on the Poiseuille's law 
which is given by V is equal to C D E square gamma W by mu into U cube by 1 plus E into I. Now if you look into the Cosney carbon equation the V which is uh, uh, nothing but uh, defined as discharge velocity and the CS is uh, uh, defined as a shape factor for granular soils typically CS will be equal to 2.5 SS is nothing but the surface area per unit volume of uh, solids. So the surface area uh, of the unit volume of the solids suppose if you see here it is uh, uh, in the denominator and uh, the factor T which is nothing but the tortuosity factor which is defined as uh, ratio of the tortuous length that is nothing but a path taken by the water flowing through the soil along the voids. That means that this particular length which is uh, indicated here the wavy pattern is uh, nothing but the tortuous path. The length L is nothing but the length of the sample through which the flow is occurring. So the tortuosity is nothing but ratio of the tortuous length that is L1 to L. So for, uh, for granular soils the tortuosity factor is 1.414. So where here one parameter which is defined uh, which is called as the absolute permeability uh, uh, or intrinsic permeability which is found to be uh, constant for uh, typical soil skeleton. So same value will be there for a, a particular soil and particular state. So uh, the permeability quotient of permeability is now uh, connected with capital K and gamma W by mu. So capital K is equal to capital K is nothing but now 1 by CS and SS T square into E cube by 1 plus E. So the units for uh, absolute permeability or intrinsic permeability are generally given in Darcy's or, or centimeter square or meter square. So the units of absolute permeability which is uh, also called as intrinsic permeability and which is found to be uh, you know function of the soil skeleton and it possesses the same value for a particular uh, soil and 1 Darcy uh, is equal to 0 0.987 into 10 to the power of minus 8 centimeter square. So here we have said that quotient of permeability is a function of the uh, number of parameters like one is specific surface area and tortuosity factor and void ratio and uh, the shape factor for basically for granular soils. So the factors affecting the permeability can be summarized like this. So based on the previous discussions by uh, by equations proposed by Kozni Karman or Taylor uh, 1948 shape and size of soil particles that is shape of the soil particle whether it is a angular or whether it is uh, having a uh, plate shaped particle and the size of the soil particles that means that larger the soil particle or smaller the soil particle and void ratio. So K increases with increase in the void ratio and degree of saturation. Uh, also like K increases with increase in the uh, degree of saturation. For partially saturated soils uh, the permeability will be is uh, will be less uh, because of the partial saturation. The composition of soil particles uh, it also depends upon the mineralogy type of the mineral present in the soil. So soil structure and viscosity of the permeability and density and concentration of the permeability. So list of the factors affecting the permeability are the shape and size of the soil particles, void ratio, degree of saturation, composition of soil particles, soil structure and viscosity of the permeant and density and concentration of the permeant and also like uh, the compactive effort uh, you know with the, with the different compactive efforts and different molding water contents there will be change in the permeability. So here the, the factors affecting the permeability what we discussed is that effect of void ratio and uh, basically here on the left hand side uh, the permeability which is uh, uh, which is uh, permeability that is uh, permeability factors like different uh, E cube by 1 plus E, E square by 1 plus E and E square are given in the y axis and the permeability in mm per second which is actually given on the x axis. So for granular soils K is proportional to approximately E cube by 1 plus E into uh, degree of saturation cube. So this is approximately valid for uh, this relationship is approximate 
for uh, S that is degree of saturation less than 100 percent. Uh, on the right hand side there is a plot which is actually shown for void ratio uh, on the y axis and uh, log logarithmic of the clay logarithmic, logarithmic of k on the x axis. So, it can be seen here this is for a saturated natural clay soil saturated natural clay soils. So, this factor C k which is nothing but the permeability change factor and k naught is the permeability in the uh, at uh, void ratio E naught k naught is the permeability at initial void ratio E naught. So, once the pressure is applied or when the load is uh, applied the perim the void ratio decreases in the process what will happen the permeability changes. So, the permeability change factor is defined as d e by d log k that is the difference between uh, k 2 and k 1 permeability at different void ratios. So, this is approximately uh, 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 uh, e naught uh, for a uh, which is give approximated as c k as uh, 1 by 2 to 1 by 3 times the uh, initial void ratio. So, k uh, by knowing this uh, uh, permeability change factor we can determine permeability in a different stages and this is k is equal to k naught into 10, 10 raised to e minus e naught by c k where e is the, uh, the void ratio at a particular time and e naught is the initial void ratio and c k is the permeability change factor which is approximated as uh, 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 times the e naught and uh, k naught is the initial permeability at uh, to initial void ratio. So, in this plot uh, the relationship between the permeability change uh, index or permeability change factor c k and e naught for all clays tested or shown and this is after Tevens et al 1983. So, here it can be seen that uh, the uh, permeability change index C k is approximated as 1 by 2 to uh, 1 by uh, 1 by 2 to 1 by 3 e naught and uh, there are upper bound and uh, lower bound values which are actually shown this is based on the clays for all the types of clays tested and reported by Tevens et al 1983. So, the next factor is that effect of grain size the permeability of the grain size depend mainly on the cross sectional area of the pore channels. So, we knew that uh, when you have got uh, very the pore size which is nothing but the d is proportional to the effective particle size let us say. So, in that case uh, we can approximate d is equal to E d 10 the pore size is approximated as 20 percent of the uh, d 10 that means that the smaller the particle size the finer is the pore channel. Since the average diameter of the pores in a soil at a given porosity increase in proportion to the average grain size the permeability to the granular soils might be expected to increase as a square of the uh, some characteristic grain size. So, uh, the permeability of granular soils uh, might be expected to increase as a square of the uh, some characteristic grain size generally it is uh, uh, considered as d 10, uh, but in the recent uh, studies indicate that d 5. Uh, that is uh, uh, a soil which actually has got 5 percent particles passing. So, the uh, traditional uh, the empirical formula for uh, estimating the permeability was given by Hazen and the Hazen uh, empirical formula for predicting clay, uh, k basically valid for uh, clean sands is actually given here and which is actually valid for uh, soil which is having less than 5 percent fines. So, k is equal to C d 10 square. So, what has been done is that number of uh, sandy type of soils having less than 5 percent fines were taken and the constant head permeability tests were conducted and the correlation actually has been plotted and uh, which actually indicates that uh, the k in meter per second can be obtained with uh, constant C uh, which is uh, having, uh, having a value of 10 to the power of minus 2 and d 10 that is effective particle size. Uh, in millimeter. Once we have this uh, C is equal to 10 to the power of minus 2 and D 10 in millimeters the permeability can be obtained in meter per second. So, for a by knowing uh, the effective particle size uh, at the first hand uh, you know to in order to estimate the permeability this particular relationship can be used. So, C basically is a constant in this case it is equivalent to 10 to the power of minus 2 which includes the effect of the shape of the pore channels in the direction of the flow and the total volume of pores. So, C is a constant which includes the shape of the uh, pore channels in the direction of the floor and uh, total volume of uh, pores. 
So d10 is selected because the smaller particles control the size of the pore channels. So in this case uh, the Hazen actually has considered the uh, d10 uh, because the smaller particles control the, the size of the pore channels. This particular correlation is presented by Kenny et al 1984 and this is with uh, d5 that is uh, um, on the x axis which is represented on the log scale and the hydraulic conductivity k uh, which is actually represented on the y axis and uh, the all sands which are actually having relative density uh, 80 percent uh, placed at 80 percent relative density more or less greater than 80 percent relative density was considered and particle size of the sands which are actually used the soil which is used in the, uh, the various specimens it ranges from 0 0.04 to 25.4 mm and uh, the quotient of uniformity is in the range of 1.04 to 12 and uh, it is uh, said that the k the absolute permeability in millimeter square uh, is given as 0 0.05 to 1 into d5 square where d5 is in millimeters and uh, this, uh, this particular relationship uh, was uh, proposed by Kenny et al 1984 and the effective grain size d5 would be better choice compared to d10 according to the you know data correlated and presented by Kenny et al 1984 uh, the effective grain size was uh, d, d5 was uh, uh, reported as a better choice compared to d10 and the factors affecting the permeability further once we discuss the effect of the degree of saturation so we have said that uh, with increase in degree of saturation uh, the permeability increases. So k is actually proportional to degree of saturation at low saturation there will be reduction in the flow channels uh, available for the flow because the part of the voids is actually occupied by the uh, air. So with increase in saturation degree of saturation uh, the quotient of permeability of the soil uh, increases. So here a, a measured data which is presented by of Das 1987 where degree of saturation is plotted on the x axis and permeability is plotted on the y axis for a typical uh, sand where it can show that with increase in the degree of saturation there is an increase in the uh, permeability. Further there is a important uh, aspect which is required is that the soil fabric or soil structure or the arrangement of the soil particles within the given soil mass. The permeability of the soil deposit is significantly affected by its in, in place soil structure is loose granular soil would have higher water ratio than a dense soil and therefore would permit greater flow. So a loose granular soil would have higher water ratio than a denser soil so and then there would be a so it would permit a, a greater flow. Similarly when you have what a fine grained soil with a flocculated structure will have higher permeability than the dispersed structure. So if you look into the two types of extreme of soil one is coarse grained soil where it can have a loose uh, granular structure or same coarse grain soils can have a dense granular structure. A loose granular structure can have higher permeability than the denser granular structure. Similarly a, a fine grain soil with a flocculent uh, uh, structure or flocculent arrangement will have higher permeability uh, with than the uh, dispersed structure. So here uh, a fine grained soil with a flocculent structure will have higher permeability than the soil with a dispersed structure that is what we said. Even at uh, uh, similar void ratios a clay with uh, undisturbed flocculent structure will possess larger void openings than the same clay having a dispersed structure. So uh, the path which is actually uh, this is uh, uh, with a dispersed structure where if you can see and the permeability in this direction is found to be less. And when you have got uh, flow which is actually taking place in this direction because of uh, uh, certain available higher hydraulic gradient the permeability will be on the on higher side in this direction along the uh, you know the flow uh, which is actually taking place along the uh, uh, platelet particles. Uh, in the flow through clusters of the particles in clay soils so flow mainly controlled by the voids between the flocks. And the flock size is, uh, uh, is a function of the particle size, uh, shape and environment in which uh, uh, these flocks have been formed. And the, for marine elytic clays uh, the permeability uh, which is actually KH and KV uh, will be equivalent to 1, uh, 1 to 1.5. And the quotient of permeability of a soil with uh, uh, flocculent structure will be isotropic in nature in the sense that the flow 
the number of flow channels available to flow in uh, any direction will be equal or identical for a, a flocculent structure. Whereas in case of a dispersed structure the flow along the shape of the, the dispersed uh, disp the parallel layered particles will be higher compared to the their perpendicular direction because of the uh, increased tortuosity uh, for the flow. So for the marine elytic clays the KH that is quotient of permeability in the horizontal direction and the quotient of permeability in the vertical direction the ratio can be equal to 1 to 1.5 depending upon the, the type of the uh, environment in which they got deposited. Similarly when you have got uh, the compactive effort uh, with an increasing compactive effort the permeability decreases. So for example here uh, on the y axis there is a gamma d uh, which is plotted here uh, which is also shown here and the water content on the x axis. So as we have seen for a typical clay initially this is uh, this particular portion is the uh, optimum moisture content and uh, this side is the wet, wet side of optimum and this side is the dry side of optimum. So at this point the density is actually maximum so lower void ratio will be there and here the density is less and the higher void ratio is possible and uh, so as the uh, water content is increased you can uh, notice that the soil fabric changes from more or less from the flocculent structure to a dispersed structure. So the particles uh, uh, undergo uh, in the process of the compaction the particles undergo uh, rotation by about uh, 90 degrees in the sense that what will happen is that the particles uh, finally once they reach the wet side of the optimum they start getting uh, arranged uh, parallel to each other. So in the process uh, you know what we can say is that then the wet side of optimum the predominant uh, soil structure in case of when you compact the soils is the dispersed in nature the same soil with the higher low, lower water content but same density can actually have a flocculent structure at the maximum dry, dry unit weight and water optimum water content the soil structure is neither flocculent nor dispersed it actually has got the blend of both flocculent and dispersed structures. So we here with the increase in the you know compactive effort this is the lower compactive effort and this is the standard uh, Proctor compact effort say and this is the modified Proctor compact effect and with increase in uh, compact effort uh, there will be a decrease in the permeability because with increase in compact effort there is an increase in the density and then decrease in the void ratio that means that the permeability uh, decreases. So here uh, variation of the K with uh, water content and gamma D is actually discussed here the importance of the fabric is brought out here. So in this particular slide which is actually shown here this is the compaction curve and this is the 100% saturation line or zero air voids line and this is the line of optimums that is with increase in compact effort the compaction curves the maximum peaks will be the occurring here and on the plot below what you see is the logarithmic k versus water content. So what we notice that initially the permeability will be high and once it reaches to the optimum optimum water content the permeability takes a dip and that is decreases and further there is an increase in the permeability but towards the wet side of optimum you can see here up to certain extent here there is a possibility that the permeability is actually decreasing towards the wet side of the optimum. So the dry side of optimum uh, the dense aggregates with larger voids will be there because of this uh, also we discussed that the flocculent uh, fabric or flocculated structure will be there because of that the high permeability is resulted. In two, when, they, when we consider the wet side of optimum the more uniform distribution of particles with small voids hence the low permeability can uh, result and uh, especially this is attributed to the dispersed fabric which is prevalent on the wet side of optimum. At same uh, gamma d that is the dry unit weight you can notice that the permeability of the wet clay is actually less than the permeability of the dry clay. So that is the reason why for certain type of uh, applications uh, it is uh, advised to uh, compact the clay uh, especially for uh, uh, constructing clay barriers it is advised to uh, compact the clay towards the wet side of optimum because the permeability will be less because there it is not the strength of the soil which is important 
the soil which is actually having uh, you know the target permeability is important. So here uh, uh, which is actually given uh, like uh, again where minimum k for given compact effort for example here the, the same uh, plot which is actually shown here but I would like to draw your attention to the two curves which is actually shown here this is the curve A and this is the curve B. So curve A if you notice here k minimum is actually occurring at Wm is equal to at the W opt that is the optimum water content that is at maximum gamma d the minimum void ratio. So the k minimum is actually occurring at the Wm is equal to W opt. In case of curve B that is here uh, which is actually shown here curve B which is here where k minimum is actually occurring at Wm greater than uh, W opt. So the fabric is actually more important than decrease in. So this indicates that uh, the particle arrangement is actually more important than the decrease in the gamma D. So in the field always use uh, Wm uh, uh, greater than or equal to W opt to get low permeability especially for clay barriers that is what we actually have discussed in the previous slide also. So in this particular slide variation of K with water content gamma D a real test data is actually reported by Daniel and Benson 1980 is presented here on the vertical axis what you see is the permeability is given in K in centimeter per second and the molding water content is actually given on the X axis and this is basically a silty clay with the liquid limit 37 percent and plastic limit 23 percent hence the plasticity index is about 14 percent. So um, these are the three types of compactive efforts are actually represented here or considered one is the low compaction low proctor compaction that means that in this case the energy compactive energy is less compared to uh, the standard proctor medium is nothing but the standard proctor and uh, high effort is nothing but the modified proctor. So you can see that the effect of the compactive effort on the optimum where you can see that different with the increase in the compactive effort there is a decrease in the optimum water content. And the second issue is that the typical distinct variation of the permeability with molding water content. So with an increasing molding water content there is a decrease in the permeability and we see that beyond optimum for all the different all the types of compact efforts irrespective of the compact efforts you can see that a decrease which actually happens beyond the optimum. So this is for high effort we can see that the permeability decreases and here you can see that so beyond the optimum content beyond the optimum content but when we when we come to the wet side of optimum uh, as we discussed in the previous slide uh, we have to note that the dent, uh, the type of the arrangement the particle arrangement plays a key role than the, the density which is achieved. Further uh, connecting to our uh, discussion in affecting the permeabilities effect of soil type. The volume of the water that can flow through a soil mass is related more to the size of the void openings than the number of the total number of voids. So uh, we if you note down the k coefficient of permeability of the coarse grain soil is always greater than k of the fine grain soils. Even though if you look into the void ratios are frequently uh, greater for the fine grain soils see fine grain soils can actually have very high void ratios. So if you say that k increases with increase in void ratio which this argument is not really true uh, when it comes to this particular uh, you know factor. So the k of the coarse grain soils is greater than k of fine grain soils in fact uh, the k of the coefficient of permeability of the sandy soil is about 1 million times uh, than that of the uh, you know 1 million times uh, of the clay soil. So the k of coarse grain soils is a function of the particle size gradation and particle shape roughness and void ratio of the medium. If you consider the coefficient of permeability of the coarse grain soils when you distort the factors it is function of the particle size gradation particle shape roughness and the void ratio of the soil medium. And the k of the fine grain soils which is a function of the type of the clay mineral and adsorbed ions and where the particle surface forces actually predominate. So when you have this one so the if you look if you look into this and if you consider the application of fluid mechanics to that then we will be able to understand why you know the k of coarse grain soils is greater than k of fine grain soils. So in this particular slide what is actually shown is a typical flow 
which is actually happens through a, a coarse grain soil having a, you know let us assume that if you have got a grain here and if you have got a grain here and because of the uh, presence of roughness the velocity uh, with which the water is actually flowing through the uh, voids is actually decreases in the sense that along the boundary walls the because of the frictional drag the velocity drops to 0 and but at the mid uh, distance from the that is d by 2 if d is the diameter of the pore at d by 2 from the uh, edge of the uh, wall it can be seen that the velocity is actually maximum here. So uh, the typical velocity distribution if you assume by using the flow of water through uh, two parallel plates and two parallel plates are actually considered as the edges of the you know the soil particles and uh, the flow through the pore channel in a sandy soil is represented like this. Uh, when we actually consider uh, you know clay soil uh, we actually have the adsorbed water that is the adsorbed water which is actually there and, uh, and then there is uh, a possibility that uh, uh, because of the flow which is actually taking place this adsorbed uh, water layer uh, and then because of the frictional effect the velocity here also drops down to 0. Uh, but uh, at the center there will be maximum but when you consider the magnitude of this and magnitude of this this particular V max in the sandy soil V max in the uh, clay soil there is a marginal uh, difference will be there. Uh, similarly when you have got say depressed double layer uh, with uh, decreased uh, adsorbed layer then there can be possible that uh, you know more water flow can take place. But however uh, if you look into this this velocity distribution though it is analogous but uh, this is actually several magnitudes less than the uh, flow through the pore channel in sandy soil. So the phenomena of the higher permeability of the coarse grade soil can be explained using the concept of the water flow through the a conduit. So because of this the, the particular coarse grain soil will actually have higher permeability but when it comes to fine grain soil uh, we actually have said that one is that adsorbed uh, uh, you know when water is actually flowing through the adsorbed water layer there is a decrease in the velocity distribution. Moreover it is uh, nothing but the type of the mineral which is actually present for example a for a fine grained soils when white spaces are very, are very small all lines of flow are physically close to the wall of the conduit and uh, therefore only low velocity occurs. In clays basically the flow is already uh, occurs in small channels and is further ampered because of the some of the water voids is held or adsorbed to the clay particles reducing the flow area further and restricting the flow. So because of uh, this particular explanation uh, with the uh, whatever we have discussed so far we can say that the clay of the uh, the quotient of the permeability of the clay soil is uh, much less than the quotient of permeability of sandy soil. Now further one of the uh, other factors which we have discussed is that the effect of the permeant like if you have got uh, uh, the permeant which is actually given as uh, you know k is proportional to unit weight of the permeant and uh, the viscosity of the permeant. Variation of the gamma uh, w that is the unit weight of the water water as the permeant is temp with temperature is negligible but the variation of mu with the temperature is uh, not negligible. So higher the uh, you know dynamic viscosity of the permeant the lower will be the permeability. So with increase in uh, you know viscosity of the pore fluid the permeability of the soil can be decreased. So variation of the mu with the temperature is uh, not negligible but if you are able to increase let us say that the pore fluid is actually replaced with another pore fluid having a higher uh, uh, mu the quotient of the permeability can be brought down. And uh, further we also uh, discussed that from the kozni karman equation effect of the specific surface area. So here if indicates that higher the specific surface area lower will be the permeability that means that uh, higher will be the specific surface area means for example when you take kaolinite, illite and mantemolite the illite mineral uh, the mantemolite minerals have actually very high specific surface area, area compared to the kaolinite uh, mineral particles. So that means that uh, with an increase in uh, specific surface area uh, the permeability of the soil uh, decreases and uh, also exhibits the this is attributed to the more adsorption. The classification of the uh, soils according to their uh, quotient of permeability if you look into it, it can be given as uh, degree of, so the soil can be classified based on the different values of the permeability. 
when you say that uh, permeability value in meter per second if it is greater than 10 to the power of minus 3 we say that the soil actually has got high permeability and when the permeability is in the range of 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 5 meter per second we can say that the soil is actually having medium permeability and the low which is in between 10 to the power of minus 5 to 10 to the power of minus 7 meter per second and very low that is between 10 to the power of minus 7 to 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second and the soil is said to be are classified based on the permeability as practically impervious if the permeability is less than 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second. So we as of now we discussed for the homogeneous uh, soils but uh, uh, we may not actually get uh, the homogeneous soil deposits uh, frequently. So the effect of the you know quotient of permeability of the saturated soils uh, or the stratified soils. So in this particular case uh, a layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 the water can actually flow through parallel to the layers or water can actually flow up to downwards that is in the vertical direction that means that the in a given soil when it have got a status so the water can flow in horizontal direction as well as vertical direction or upward direction because of some artesian conditions. So in that case uh, how to determine the equivalent permeability uh, which we require to understand. In general uh, the natural soil deposits are stratified and if the stratification is continuous uh, the effective coefficient of the permeabilities in the horizontal vertical directions can be uh, readily calculated. So uh, in this particular uh, discussion uh, if you simplify by using our uh, for uh, determining the uh, this particular condition of flow occurring parallel to the layers that means that if you have got say uh, h1, h2, h3 to hn n number of layers uh, in a uh, bedded horizontally the flow in the horizontal direction that is parallel to the layers when it is actually happening. Let us assume that uh, when we are the left hand side limb and the difference in head between these two is say hl which is nothing but the head loss between this point and this point and uh, so the input is nothing but the water which is q. So these soils can actually have permeabilities k1, k2, k3, k4 to so on to kn. So the equivalent permeability in the horizontal direction is that k equivalent uh, in the horizontal direction or kh and the total thickness of the soil layer is nothing but h1 plus h2 plus h3 so on to hn. So here the condition is that q in is equal to q out with that what will happen is that the flow gets uh, divided into you know depending upon the permeability of the soil uh, which is apportioned as q is equal to uh, q1 plus q2 plus, plus q3 so on to qn. So the condition here is that uh, the head loss which actually occurs over uh, uh, you know length of the sample L and the discharge q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 so on to qn and then q which is actually comes out. So with the base on that discussion uh, for the flow uh, in the horizontal direction parallel to the layers for horizontal flow the head drop hl or the same flow path length l will be the same for each layer. So uh, because as the head, lo head loss which actually occurs over a length of the sample l uh, though it is actually having the different uh, type of the soil layers and uh, the hydraulic gradient which actually gets uh, uh, dissipated in layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3 is equal to IN. So the flow rate through a layered block of soil of breadth B, B is the unit perpendicular to the, the plane of the figure which we considered. So with that we can say the KIA which is nothing but KH that is the equivalent permeability in the horizontal direction, I which is nothing but the hydraulic gradient and H is the thickness of the soil strata and B is the breadth perpendicular to the uh, the plane of the figure which we considered. So Kia is nothing but Khibh. Similarly, for layer one, layer two, layer three, if you write layer one, we can write it as K1 I1 B uh, H1. Similarly, for layer two, K2 I B H2. So when I computing the flow uh, in the horizontal direction, as Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus uh, Q3 so on to Qn, I can write now by simplification Kh is equal to k1 h1 plus k2 h2 plus k3 h2 and so on to kn hn divided by h1 plus h2 plus h3 so on to hn. So this uh, a summation which is given as kh is equal to m is equal to 1 to n khm into hm uh, divided by hm m is equal to 1 to n. So kh is nothing but the equivalent quotient of permeability in the horizontal direction. So 
for uh, equivalent for determining the equivalent permeability when you have got uh, stratified layers when the flow is actually occurring through the uh, parallel to the layers we can determine the permeability uh, equivalent permeability has kh is equal to k1 h1 plus k2 h2 plus k3 h3 so on to kn hn divided by h1 plus h2 plus h3 uh, so on to hn similarly when you consider the stratified soils and permeability particularly the flow in the vertical direction that means that when the flow is actually happens uh, uh, perpendicular to the layers so in this case here because of the uh, higher head here the water actually takes place water flows upwards like this but we have got uh, different uh, layers of uh, thicknesses like k1 having uh, thickness of h1 layer having h2 having permeability k2 layer having thickness h3 and having permeability k3 so on to layer having thickness hn2 having permeability with kn so but here what is actually happening is that the it is the head which is uh, you know gets apportioned is your i is equal to you know i1 plus i2 plus i3 uh, but uh, what actually happens is that the q which is actually entering in the soil strata stratified soil and coming out will be equal that is q is equal to q1 is equal to q3 is equal to qn with this condition now we can write now for a flow in the vertical direction that is perpendicular to the uh, layers for vertical flow the flow rate q through area a of each layer is same so the head drop uh, across a series of layers that is we can say that the head drop which is nothing but the uh, the head loss in layer 1 and then the total head loss is equal to head loss in layer 1 plus head loss in layer 2 so on to head loss in the layer n. So we can write now with i is equal to uh, h by uh, that is the that is uh, delta h by l where l, l is nothing but the thickness of the layer when you put into that uh, I can write as h l as i h that is in terms of uh, h is the total thickness of the stratified layers and I1 is the head, uh, hydraulic gradient occurred in the uh, layer 1 and H1 is the thickness of the layer 1, I2 is the hydraulic gradient occurred in the layer 2 and H2 is the thickness of the uh, layer, layer 2, similarly I3, H3 and so on to INHN. By substituting uh, V is equal to Ki that is nothing but I is equal to V by K, so in the case on the left hand side we can write as V by KV into H is equal to v by k1 into h1 plus v by k2 into h2 plus v by k3 into h3 so on to v by kn into hn. So this particular expression when you further simplify for the flow in vertical direction that is perpendicular to layers we can write it as kv is equal to h1 plus h2 plus h3 so on to hn divided by h1 by k1 plus h2 by k2 plus h3 by k3 so on to h uh, hn by kn. This is h this is hn by kn so the k vertical permeability is nothing but m is equal to 1 to n hm divided by m is equal to 1 summation to n to hm by k vertical permeability uh, of the particular layers so the equivalent permeability of equivalent coefficient of permeability in the vertical direction so this can be used for both vertical flows uh, flow occurring perpendicular to the uh, soil strata in the vertical direction the kv can be given as h1 plus h2 plus h3 so on to hn to h1 by k1 plus h2 by k2 plus h3 by k3 so on to hn by kn. So the main points about the stratified soils we should understand is that in general for stratified soils what we have seen is that kh is not equivalent to kv. So uh, when you look, when we say that uh, the horizontal permeability is not equivalent to vertical permeability then we say that the soil is anisotropic in nature. In case where a soil deposits permeabilities are not the same in all direction then we say that the properties are anisotropic if the properties of the uh, say uh, are the same in all the directions then it is called isotropic for example when you are actually constructing an embankment with uh, a material obtained from uh, a barometry borrowed area and when you are achieving the uh, you know the identical permeability because of the compaction then we can say that the permeability is isotropic in nature but particularly when we are actually constructing uh, uh, earthen dams with different types of uh, soils or when we are considering uh, flow occurring in soil stratas 
then they are generally anisotropic in nature. So for stratified soils we always uh, uh, we say that the KH is uh, always greater than KV. Uh, the reason which is actually attributed to uh, if you look into it the uh, if you if you consider from the uh, you know quotient of earth pressure at rest if you look into if you recall that one and which is nothing but K is equal to K H by K is equal to sigma H by sigma V. Uh, when uh, k is equal to say 0.5, sigma h is equal to 0.5 times sigma v. That means that uh, for uh, some uh, stratified soils, k h is actually less than k v. So sigma h is less than uh, uh, sigma v, and for that k h will be greater than k v. So more voids or more spaces are available in the horizontal plane uh, under the consideration. That means that ease with which the flow can takes place in along the horizontal direction is uh, relatively higher compared to the vertical direction and because of this particular uh, you know, the number of void which are actually available for the water to flow through uh, in the horizontal direction is uh, uh, they are higher compared to uh, you know in the vertical direction and because predominantly because of uh, you know low horizontal stresses. But however in case of uh, some ore consolidated soils where the locking of the stresses takes place. Uh, this particular uh, uh, you know deliberation is not valid. Uh, so uh, for uh, stratified soils basically normally consolidated in nature there where sigma h is less than sigma v and the permeability uh, is mostly uh, that is kh is actually greater than kv. So this is an example problem based on the uh, study flow parallel to the soil layers. Uh, here in this particular problem, uh, there there is an impermeable impermeable layer at the impermeable layer at the bottom most, and then that that uh, top surface of the impermeable layer is actually given as the datum or considered as a datum, and uh, coarse sand which actually has got uh, permeability of two into ten to the power of minus four meter per uh, second, and it is uh, having a thickness of three meters. Above that there is uh, a four meter medium sand, and six meter coarse sand K is equal to ten to the power of minus four meter per second. And medium sand actually has got k is equal to 0.5 in 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second. Now at point A, uh, that is uh, uh, the height above uh, this thing is about 10 meters, and the total length is about uh, 100 100 meters, and the head loss is actually occurring from say A to B. So we need to determine the equivalent permeability. So the solution is actually as follows, and we also assume that there is an impermeable layer at the at the top so the flow actually takes place uh, parallel to the uh, the layers which are actually shown three layers which are the coarse sand layer a medium sand layer and coarse sand layer below the solution for this problem works out like this total head at a which is nothing but the 13 meters plus 10 meters that means that here the from the depending upon the location uh, the thickness is that 6 plus 4 this is 13 meters so the total head at a uh, which is uh, given as uh, 13 plus 10 23 meters and the total head at B uh, that is pressure head plus elevation head which actually works out to be 17.5 plus uh, 1.5 uh, that is at B, B this is above 1.5 meters. So because of that uh, so this is 3 plus 4 7 plus 3 10 plus 3 13 plus 10 so 23 is uh, the head here and total head at B is about 19 meters. So the difference of these two which is nothing but the head loss between point A and point B which is actually shown uh, in the figure which is here point A and point B the head loss is actually is about 4 meters or a length of 100 meters between uh, A and B. So hydraulic gradient is nothing but 4 by 100 that is nothing but 0.04 using now in determining the equivalent uh, permeability in the horizontal direction when the as the flow is occurring parallel to the layers it can be given as k1 h1 plus k2 h2 plus k3 h3 divided by h1 plus h2 plus h3. So with that we can say that k h is equal to 1.077 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meter per second and uh, once we get this one the total flow can be estimated as which is nothing but k h i and uh, capital H which is nothing but the summation of H1 plus H2 plus H3 or summation of the flow 
which is actually taking place in layer 1 plus layer 2 plus layer 3 that is q1 plus q2 plus q3. So here q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3. Now let us consider one more example problem in determining the permeability wherein in this particular arrangement which is actually shown calculate the volume of the water discharged in 20 minutes. The cross sectional area of the soil is 400 mm square and the this ordinate which is actually here is 225 mm and this horizontal distance is 150 mm and this distance above this where the inflow and the surplus flow is actually discharge takes place the, the war flow takes place here. So this height is 375 mm and above this horizontal line this height is about 150 mm. So the war flow uh, that is discharge takes place from this here. So the permeable the soil which is actually placed here is having 4 mm per second. So the solution for this uh, problem works out like this. Uh, we need to estimate amount of flow which actually takes place uh, uh, in 20 minutes. So by converting 20 minutes into seconds 20 into 60 to 100 seconds and uh, area of the cross section which is perpendicular to the uh, uh, you know the uh, flow direction which is nothing but the area which is given as uh, 4000 mm square which is can be converted into 4000 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square and the permeability of the soil is in meter per second it is 4 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter per second. Now here the length of the sample is nothing but the square of uh, you know the vertical ordinate and horizontal ordinate and with that we can actually get as 0.375 meters. So the delta H by L the hydraulic gradient is nothing but uh, by considering uh, 225 plus 375 minus 150 we will be able to get uh, this as uh, delta H divided by uh, 375 that is the length of the soil sample. So delta H by L is equal to 1.2 by using uh, Q is equal to K into delta H by L into T. So we need to estimate the amount of water which actually flows over uh, 20 minutes duration. So that is given as A which is nothing but uh, 4 into uh, 4000 into 10 to the power of minus 6 uh, meter square and uh, the permeability which is actually given as uh, 4 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter per second and uh, hydraulic gradient is 1.2. So with that it works out to be 23.04 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter cube which is nothing but about 23.04 liters. So in this particular lecture on seepage the permeability and the seepage part 3 we discussed about the factors influencing the permeability and we actually have solved some couple of problems. In the next lecture we will try to discuss about the flow seepage theories and then some relevant discussions pertaining to seepage theory.